talk about formality, mm -hmm. if you will, and we're, we're getting into where I grew up, which we're trying to keep secret for some cockeyed reason. Anyway, um, in cities where there has been historically an interest in formalism, mm -hmm. Cities like New York City, Boston, D.C., uh, Philadelphia, Atlanta, specifically those cities, mm -hmm. or, and uh, Charlotte, maybe. Um, those are formal cities where mm -hmm. people really put a great deal of emphasis on the social graces and uh, being socially correct. Mm -hmm. Those are cities in which gay leathermen have historically been very formal. But in other cities like New Orleans and uh, Denver, uh, San Francisco, any of the West Coast cities, it's a lot more relaxed and very informal by comparison. So to suggest that there is a single gay male protocol mm -hmm. is just ignorant because there are formal places where protocol is a big deal and there are informal places where it's kind of just a pain in the ass. Okay, if I, let's, let's, Fantasize here. Okay. Uh oh. We're going to fantasize <laughs> I'm here. scared suddenly. You and I are, are youngsters. I mean, you, you've, been, you've been involved in the BDSM community, and I'm a dude, and I want to get into the BDSM community, and I come to you. We're talking about, you know, you know 40 years ago. We're oh, talking okay. about then, okay? All right. This is what we're, I think this is what we're trying to get at is where if I was a male and I wanted to come to you and I wanted to say, look, I really want to get into this community and this BDSM stuff, I've got this urge. What am I going to do for what, you? What do I need to do besides suck you your You need to cock? go to lunch with me. <laughs> no, no, you need to go to lunch with me. Uh-huh. And over that lunch, I'm going to listen carefully to you to find out whether or not I think you're uh, qualified mm -hmm. to be introduced into that world. And there would be questions you would ask me? No, I'm going to listen more than I'm going to okay. talk. And I'm going to find out, you know, what, a little bit about your character. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find out whether or not I think you're crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find out whether or not you've got values mm -hmm. and whether or not you're smart mm -hmm. and interesting and therefore qualified to be introduced into that world. Because if you're a loose cannon, or uh, you've got uh, a strange personality, uh, or you have a, a, a big arrest record, um, uh, or I think you might be criminal, or you know, a drug abuser, not a drug user, a drug abuser. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to uh, introduce you. Question. Hello, it's the Rev Mel Show. You're on the air. Hello, this is Slave Christine. Hello, Slave Christine. You have a question for our <laughs> our guest? Yes, I do actually. We'd love could you speak up a little bit, please? Where's she from? Where are you from? New York City. New York City. <laughs> Hi Christine. It's nice to hear your oh. voice again. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I know who this is. And, and uh, speaking question? of the current topic. I had a question about your ideas on opening the tent flaps of the community. I can't hear her. How can you possibly... Um, Christine, could you hold on one second, please? Certainly. That's it. That's Ask it. her to speak no, up. No, no, just once. Yeah, can you speak up a little bit? Yes, can you hear me now? We can hear you now, thank you. I'm a Verizon commercial. I know. So my question was... Speaking of uh, introducing people who come to you with an interest and sort of wanting to direct them in the right place, when uh -huh. the tin flaps are open to the community as it is, how can we be more proactive in really helping someone to point them in the right direction and in being that sort of filter? Well. Back in the day when there was just one gateway into this world, uh, that was a lot easier to, uh, to, be, to manage, to control, if you will. But now the internet is the gateway uh, into the world of radis radical sexuality. 
And uh, given that that's true, there really is no way to make certain uh, that there's a responsible introduction uh, because there's a lot of good information available on the internet, but there's a lot of misinformation available on the internet as well. And it's very difficult for uh, a newcomer to be able to discern usefully and accurately and safely uh, uh, what to pay attention to now. Uh, so it's a much more complicated business now than it used to be because there's no longer any, any mechanism by which people must be pre-qualified in order to have exotic, erotic information, uh, as was once the case. So, for example, now you can uh, go to an educational event and pay uh, your admission fee uh, and attend a class on how to do uh, waterboarding or fire play mm -hmm. or advanced stuff uh, uh, that is extremely risky. And of course, you, you know, a newcomer walks out of a class like that and says, uh, well, I saw this guy do all this stuff teaching and he made it look easy. I think I'll try it myself. So pretty soon you have, you have uh, uh, AK-47s in the hands of 11-year-olds, um, and it's only a matter of time until uh, people get hurt, and people are being hurt, yep. uh, not, as, uh, not uh, as frequently as I, as I, well, we don't know how frequently, because we don't, we don't have any good way to collect information about, about that. Uh, but... <sighs> Um, I'm sure that, that many people watching uh, have uh, seen the old Walt Disney Fantasia mm -hmm. uh, piece where you have uh, Mickey Mouse and the Sorcerer's Apprentice and uh, Mickey watches the sorcerer with his tall pointed hat and his robed with you know stars and crescent moons uh, casting spells and then the wizard gets tired and he goes off to bed. And uh, Mickey, of course, has to carry water because uh, he's just the apprentice. So uh, Mickey decides he's going to open up the spell book of the sorcerer and cast a spell on the brooms. And he does that. And pretty soon the brooms are carrying water like crazy. Oh, uh, next thing you know, the place is flooding because Mickey knows how to start the spell, but he doesn't know how to turn it off. Oh. She hung up. And... Um, when we start talking about, about high-end radical sexuality, mm -hmm. uh, it's important to know how the spells work. Um, so we, we've gotten into a period of time with the BDSM community where everything is commercialized right now. People did not realize that they could make money onto BDSM up until like the last five or six or seven years. People all of a sudden realize that they can. Earlier. Earlier. You much think earlier, it was much yeah. earlier? Well, yeah, the first people to try to make money in, out of radical sexuality were uh, leather makers, were toy makers, and people who made clothing, and mm -hmm. people who made whips, and people who made equipment. Uh, I mean, there are I so mean, many people making stuff for BDSM. There are indeed. When I was a, when I was a young kinkling uh, and uh, apprentice to the first uh, mentor that I had, his first assignment to me was to uh, make a whip for myself that was a copy of one of his. Because there was no place to buy that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I actually had to go out and get the materials mm -hmm. and I had to assemble mm -hmm. my own gear. I still have that. I probably should have brought it. Um, you still have it? Oh yeah, sure I do. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, Once I... you play with somebody yeah. and a piece of equipment, mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't know. I, everybody feels differently about this. But I feel like the spirit of all the people that I've ever played with my, with my equipment lives in my equipment. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. So I wouldn't ever think about throwing anything away. Yeah, I took an old pair of leather pants. Yeah. Cut it up. Into? A flogger. And I still use it as cool. a warm-up. Yeah, well, then it feel good. Oh, I love it. The, yeah. And, and, you know, one of the sort of old guard ideas was that leather should be kept working as long as it can be. Mm -hmm. As long as it has a life left in it, it should be. Uh, it should continue until it doesn't have life in it anymore, and yeah. then it should be retired with honor. Well, 
the qualities that you look for in somebody when you know we're talking about we're back in that little fantasy being pre-qualified yeah, you to, and I, you know yeah I, you know i'm you know i'm gonna meet him at a at a coffee shop and we're gonna talk and i really want this bad i'm or i'm lying here i'm really a submissive you know and it wouldn't I'm, matter whether you, yeah. what what end of that you were on so if what, i met you and we had lunch and i liked I, you know, you impressed me as somebody who I think would would make uh, an addition to mm -hmm. the world I move in. Mm -hmm. uh, then I would uh, invite you to a social event. Mm -hmm. You'd, you know, I'd invite you to come watch Sunday football mm -hmm. uh, and have outdoor barbecue with some of the guys because I'd want them to be able to take your temperature too. Ah, that's a nice idea. Uh, and that's how it worked. So you just didn't like. Today, okay. Today. Oh, you I, want to hook up right now? No. No, no. <laughs> oh, come on. Mm -mm. I've had this fantasy. Sorry. It's not how it works. <laughs> you know. But today's so different. Very different. I mean, I, matter of fact, to illustrate the difference really elegantly, uh, I was online uh, with the guy last weekend. We were having a nice uh, visit. And uh, he said, so do you have any interest in getting together? And I said, yeah. Uh, why don't we uh, meet for dinner next Friday night? There was a pause. He said, dinner? Uh, don't you want to uh, get together and play? And I said, well, you know, mother told me never to fuck anybody uh, that I wouldn't have a meal with. Wow, I agree with you. And there was a, another pause. It was like, oh, hmm. well, I guess that makes sense. Once you point it out to people, that you know, there's more, there's more that's possible here. Uh, then they sort of get it, you know. It's like, uh, well, uh, let me get back to you. Well, needless to say, I haven't heard from this person yet because it was all about, you know, not Mr. Right, but Mr. Right now. Mm -hmm. And the old guard guys that I grew up around, just that wasn't the, you know, that wasn't it. No. And would you want to be with somebody if it's just for right now? The answer I mean, is a lot of times, yes. There are a lot of young people who are all about instant hookups. Yeah. Um, and... And they do do instant hookups. Oh, sure. I mean, you know, the horror stories that we've heard. What we're going to do is we need to take a break. I want to come back to some of them. Okay, go ahead. So we're going to take a break. See you in a bit. Bye-bye. You've been watching the Rev Mel Show with my wonderful guest, Guy Baldwin. And if he's got... He can become your therapist if you want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So we'll be right back. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs>